This Filmmaker IQ lesson is proudly sponsored by Rode Microphones, premium microphones and audio accessories for studio, live, and location recording. Hi, John Hess from FilmmakerIQ.com, and today we're going to dive into the world of sound effects and Foley. I'm going to burst the bubble here. Almost every sound you hear in a movie was not there to begin with. When shooting on location or on a set, it's simply not possible to accurately record all the little tiny noises that come from everyday life. Now let's do a quick experiment. Try scratching your face next to your ear. Do you hear that? But when I do it, the mic that's picking up my voice can't pick up that minute sound. During production, sound recorders focus on recording dialogue, but even that can be re-recorded in the post-production stage in a process called looping or ADR. So all those little sounds that make the scene feel alive, even stuff as simple as a scratch, are added in the post-production stage. Now these sound effects can be broken down into roughly three broad categories. There's ambience, which is background noise, a psychological cue for the space that the scene takes place in. Now, this is sometimes recorded on location. A good rule of thumb is to always record a minute's worth of ambience before leaving a location. This is to ensure that you have something to work with that sounds like the original location but sometimes you'll need ambience that is different from what you recorded to create a new illusion, say to create the atmosphere of a bustling restaurant. Now, these ambience tracks are available commercially from sound libraries, which leads us to our second category, library sound effects. These effects can be purchased commercially or created wild. That is a sound effect that is recorded that isn't tied to a particular visual. Often these are difficult to obtain, expensive or dangerous to produce sound effects like gunshots, explosions, or glass shattering. Then the third type of post sound effect is sound that is performed and recorded specifically for a visual in a film. This is called Foley. A Foley itself can be broken into three rough categories. Footsteps, which is the sound of movements of characters on the screen, and we're not just talking about human footsteps either. Cloth, the sound of costumes as characters move about, and props, the sound of objects in a scene. What seems so obvious and common sense today with post-production sound actually traces its roots far back into vaudeville, which itself was influenced by the English Music Hall. A form of theatrical variety shows, vaudeville was a powerful force in entertainment in the late 19th and early 20th century. Featuring live accompanying bands, it was common practice for the vaudeville drummer to highlight dance kicks or sight gags with a cymbal or a snare hit on the drum set. Vaudeville is where we get that familiar rim shot at the end of a joke. But by the 1930s, vaudeville as a theatrical venue was starting to lose momentum, relegated to the Catskill Resort Borscht Belt in Upper New York State. What took its place were two new technological mediums, broadcast radio plays, and of course, talking pictures. A popular radio variety shows borrowed heavily from vaudeville, using sound effects to highlight gags. But that didn't stop there. As radio began to incorporate more scripted content, producers relied more and more on sound effects to create a visual picture in the listener's mind, as demonstrated in this promotional it's film you know. from 1938. We're gaining on them. They've seen us, Tom. Right, fellas. They probably have fresh horses at the creek. Hold up there. We'll set fire to the gap and stop. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Slim, you chop a couple of them small trees. Right. We'll spread a fire they can't get through. These are pretty green for burning, Sam. The grass is dry as tinder here. That'll get it started. Shorty, you get some of that dead wood burning in a hurry. Grass is catching on. It's dry, all right. How about the trees, Slim? Out ready? Move back. He's coming now. Ugh. 
That's not to say that radio was the only medium playing with sound effects. Large silent film movie houses also employed orchestras to underscore and provide sound effects for the actions on the screen. The tradition of underscoring movement in cinema with music is actually still a powerful motif as we can see from any Saturday morning cartoon. But let's back up to the late 1920s, to a very specific moment in film history, the transition between silent and talking pictures. In 1928, Universal was getting ready to release a big budget silent feature of the Broadway musical smash, Showboat. Yes, a silent film version of a musical. It may have played well with audiences five years earlier, but Warner Brothers had just released Jazz Singer a year earlier and it was sweeping the box offices. Audiences were demanding sound. So Universal decided that it was time to get into the sound movie game. Using a loaned portable Fox Case sound on film unit on soundstage 10, a 40 piece orchestra and singers recreated the music of Showboat but sound engineers still had some trouble getting the sync right for the sound effects that went along with the visual gestures. Well, that's when one Universal employee came with the idea of watching the film and recording live sound effects to go with the picture. His name was Jack Foley. Now, Jack Foley had a varied career from semi-professional baseball player to working in a hardware store to acting and directing in a small town north of Los Angeles called Bishop. In trying to get movie studios to use Bishop as a backdrop for Westerns, Foley himself fell into the movie making business, first as a stuntman, then as a double, then working his way up to assistant director. But it was his knack for sound where he really made his name. Other films followed Showboat getting the Jack Foley treatment. He and his team would watch the film and perform all the sound effects in one time onto one track as multi-track recording was still technology of the future. But for the most part, what Jack Foley did at Universal was kept kind of a secret. Within a decade, other studios began implementing their own systems for post sound effects, often hiring individuals that had worked under Jack Foley himself. Uh, Foley's techniques were groundbreaking and incredibly influential. The process was called direct to picture, but it didn't inherit its creator's name until 1962, when Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz built a stage at Desilu TV studios specifically for direct to picture recording and called it, what else? the Foley stage. Since then, the name of the inventor and the technique have been inseparable. Jack Foley died in 1967, and although he never cut a single frame of sound, the motion picture's sound editors would award him a Lifetime Achievement Award posthumously in 1997. Traditionally on a studio film, the sound duties are divided among three different mixing specialties. There's a dialogue mixer, a music mixer, and a sound effects mixer. Now everyone would sit together with a director and do a spotting session. That is, look at the film and figure out what parts need to be ADR'd, a job for the dialogue mixer who may actually have a specialist just for that what parts need musical cues, and what sound effects are required. Now from this spotting session, the sound effects mixer can determine where library sound effects can be used and what needs to be done with Foley. A cue sheets are created and then given to the Foley artist to perform. Now in the days of Jack Foley, all the sound effects had to be recorded in one single take, often by a couple of Foley artists working in tandem, like this.
even up to just a couple decades ago, Foley artists were limited to just 16 or 24 tracks of audio. But with modern digital audio workstations, there's really no limit to the number of tracks of audio that can be played back simultaneously. Modern Foley breaks the shot into several different passes, breaking down footsteps, cloth, and props into even smaller elements. A professional Foley is usually done on a specially designed sound stage with pits containing various types of walking surfaces to simulate different kinds of footsteps. A variety of shoes and props are also available. Now there are a lot of creative alternatives to common sounds like celery being used to simulate the crunch of breaking bones. And of course everyone's favorite, half coconut shells for horse hooves. But that's not to say you can't perform fully without all the professional gear. Now for this course, I wanted to create a short film that was all told through Foley sound effects. Shooting on location without having to worry about capturing sound lets you work quite quickly. Like working on a silent picture, we can just yell out direction in the middle of a take. I did record a minute of ambience just so I would have the sound of that room to work with in the mix. Now I don't have access to a dedicated Foley stage readily available, so I just used my editing bay. But there's no reason why we can't treat Foley like recording basic location audio. The first step was to do a spotting session and make a list of all the sound effects that I would need. Then I would go down my list and record the sound effects using several different passes. Using a Rode NTG2 shotgun microphone wired into my computer via a mixing board, I recorded myself and my friend performing the movements along with the motion on the screen. With Foley, it's not so much the sync that matters because sync can always be fiddled with on the timeline. It's the feel of the sound effect. Always try to get the most natural feeling sound effect. We started our Foley session focusing on recording the more subtle sound effects from the footsteps in the scene to cloth sounds of chair movement and page turns. Now then we focused on the foreground elements. In this short, a man is trying to read a book while all the people in the library are making annoying noises. Now this includes chewing gum, stirring iced coffee, and even a headbang on a desk, which as you can see took more than one take. That was awesome. All these sound effects were recorded using Adobe Audition's multi-track editor, which allowed me to punch in and record for specific moments in the film. Putting all the Foley effects together with the ambience gave me this little short film told all through visuals and sound effects. Sound is a crucial part of modern film. For all the press that new cameras receive about improvements in picture resolution, dynamic range, or low light capability, it's really the quality of the sound that elevates a picture from a home movie to a piece of cinema. Now fortunately, sound is something that can be, and is quite often, manipulated in post. 
Through the use of subtle psychological cues in sound design, you can create whatever environment you want with sound effects and Foley. But none of that, none of that can happen unless you get out there and start practicing. Try, fail, and repeat. It's all on the journey to making something great. I'm John Hess. I'll see you at filmmakeriq.com.